Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. I'm Chris Bailey, and this is part number four of our five-part series talking about the Bible as prophecy. Today, we will look at typology as prophecy. What is typology? It's just a fancy word for symbols. And so symbols as prophecy. Let's pray before we get into it, though. Thank you, Jesus, that we can have fancy words that express simple but sweet concepts and ideas, and that you use these symbols like stickers to remind us of beautiful realities and wonderful truths. So make them plain to us, please. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, growing up and when you were getting papers or you get something graded at school, uh, it's really cool when the teacher would leave stickers. Tara loves to put stickers on her students' work. And it really, honestly, no matter how old or young you are, when you do well at something, somebody gives you a sticker, you feel good. I guess for us adults, it's how you feel when you finally pay your registration for your car and you get that sticker. It's like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you got your sticker and you no longer have a dead plate. Stickers mean something. They symbolize that something or another reality is actually taking place, whether it's paying registration or whether it's doing well on a test. And so the Lord uses stickers in Daniel and stickers in Revelation to identify real things or realities. So Bible symbols always are signs of God's reality. Bible symbols as God's reality. Let's look at some stickers that he uses here, even in the book of First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, which is normally not a book that we go to when we think about prophecy, right? But let's do it because in chapter 10, verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So now in this one verse alone, the apostle Paul here trying to speak to the brothers and sisters at Corinth how the reality of Israel's baptism took place through walking through the Red Sea and under the cloud of God. He baptized them before they went into the promised land. He baptized them. He sanctified them. He cleansed them so they could go into this, this new idea of promise free from their past. The same thing happens to us today, and it's why baptism is such a beautiful opportunity for us to enter into the family of God, because it's not that you've got to do this before you get through the door. No, 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 no. What it symbolizes is that I'm coming into this situation. I'm coming into fellowship clean. I'm not coming in here with my mess. I'm leaving my past and my baggage behind, and I'm free like the Pilgrim's Progress So You saw how he goes to the cross. And when he went to the cross, what happened? He didn't continue to carry his burden. But at the cross, the burdens of his heart rolled away. Jesus could not send them into this new place with old wineskins and give them new wine with, with an old idea. So they were baptized. And the symbols expressed here prophetically are the Red Sea symbolizing the baptism and that cloud being the fact that God was the one who ministered or baptized his own people. Look at verse number two, rather verse number three, it says, and they did all eat the same spiritual meat. Now, after they were baptized, they ate food and that food that the Lord gave them was called manna. That word literally meaning, what is it? But when first Corinthians speaks of this literal food, this food was a symbol. It was a symbol of the spiritual meat the spiritual dependence on God, on Jesus ministering to them and watching over them and feeding them daily, you have again that uh, manna as a symbol of their connection or relationship to nourishment from God. So while you have the symbol of the spiritual meat, well, they had spiritual drink. And you see it there in verse four. They said they also did all drink the same spiritual drink. This is the typology, this spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. So the meat symbolizing the word of God, and then the drink symbolizing the blood of God. In effect, it symbolizes a communion that was intended to occur, not just occur, but to continue into the promised land. And it was all under the auspices or under the, from the heart of who? The rock. And the rock was a symbol or a type or typology of Christ. So you've got the Red Sea, 
baptism. You've got the cloud being the hand of God over them. Then you've got this spiritual meat, which is the, the nourishment of the word of God to us. And then you have the spiritual drink, which is the blood of Jesus that saves and cleans us from sin. All coming from the rock, who is a symbol of the rock of ages, Jesus Christ. So it's good to know that no matter how old we get, we have stickers, stickers to remind us that we never forget that all of these symbols are signs, not just of God's reality, but of God's love for us.